Hello friends and welcome to our virtual presentation of how to identify the 10 most common dragonflies in the Sacramento, California area. These 10 are probably also the most common pretty much around California. So even if you're not in the Sacramento, California area, you should be able to go out and find these, these 10 and, and many more. Before I start talking about dragonflies, I just wanted to mention a little bit about who I am and who I work for. My name is Roger Jones. I've been a wildlife biologist at the Regional Sand Bufferlands for about 30 years. The Regional Sand Bufferlands is about 2,000 acres that surrounds the Sacramento Regional Wastewater Treatment Plant. Although it was originally intended just as a buffer to, to buffer some of the potential impacts from the treatment plant to the surrounding neighborhoods, uh, it's now proven to be much more than just a, a buffer. This area provides hundreds of acres of very high quality wildlife habitat, farmland, and open space. You can learn a lot more about the Bufferlands by visiting our website at www.bufferlands.com. So the first thing I wanted to talk about was just the size of dragonflies. And so we talk about large dragonflies, medium sized, small dragonflies. You can see from this little graphic that Large dragonflies are about three inches wide, three inches long. Small ones are about two inches wide and two inches long. That's not much difference, but with a little bit of practice, you'll be able to see one and just say, hey, that's a, that's a large dragonfly or that's a small one. And uh, that kind of, it's kind of important in identification, but it takes a little bit of practice. The, there is a larger dragonfly than three inches by three inches. In the United States, it's closer to about five inches, but um, I, we haven't, we don't have that particular one in California. And I'll talk about the largest one later that we will probably see. Dragonflies are in the order Odonata. Odonata means they have large, multifaceted eyes and uh, two pairs of strong wings. Dragonflies are incredible flyers. Sometimes you can potentially mistake them for a very closely related group called the damselflies. That's the ones on the right. But um, you can it's pretty easy to tell the difference. The dragonflies have these big strong wings that they hold uh, when they when they land they put them you know straight out from the body. And the damselflies when they land they close their wings together above the body for the most part. The one you see in the middle that's actually a damselfly but it's one of a small group that's called the spread wing damselflies. And so they hold their wings something more similar to a dragonfly, but still you can look and see it's just, they're thin. Um, they don't have those big eyes like a dragonflies. And, and uh, when you see them flying, it's pretty easy to tell. You know, I mentioned that dragonflies are, you know, incredible flyers. They can, they can zoom forward, backward, up, down. They can pretty much do anything they want. And the damselflies, they have a much weaker fluttery flight. It kind of more resembles a, a helicopter hovering around. Um, quite different from the dragonflies. And a little practice and you'll be able to tell the difference fairly easily. I think one of the reasons that we, uh, we love dragonflies is because they're just so beautiful. They have these really bright, brilliant, iridescent, metallic colors. And then they have those big eyes. And those big eyes are composed of uh, up to about 24,000 omatidia, which those are the facets that you can see in the bottom left. And each one of those facets sort of operates like an independent eye. And so every one of those sends information back to the brain, uh, visual information. And that's why they can spot a gnat or a fly, you know, something out there, you know, 100 feet away and then just zoom over there and uh, intercept it and uh, be able to just grab it out of the air. You know, we have two eyes and they're a few inches apart and we do pretty good at being able to judge distance and to be able to track something's movement. But you know, that's two eyes. And with 24,000 of them, dragonflies have really perfected this. They, uh, they've done a few studies and found that uh, dragonflies in some enclosures and they released some flies and they were about 95% at uh, being able to take off and find one and grab it in the air. So they're really good. Even, you know, they're, 
between their ability to be able to see with all those eyes and interpret what's going on and their ability to fly, you know, even when the flyer net or whatever sort of makes that little last minute evasive maneuver, it doesn't matter. They're still going to get it. You know, we've all, you know, tried to swat a fly with a big old fly swatter and, you know, right at the last minute it, you know, it takes off or goes a different direction and we miss it. But, you know, that's with us and our brain and two eyes, these guys, um, they're able to deal with all of that stuff. I mean, there's really no flying insect out there that's safe when there's a dragonfly in the area. As I mentioned, they're, they're fast and agile flyers. Um, some of them migrate all the way across the oceans, uh, even a few thousand miles. So I'm going to talk just a little bit about their reproductive strategy. Uh, these guys have what's called delayed fertilization. And so what that means is that the, the male... He grabs the female right behind her head and with a, uh, a special appendage on the end of its body. And it kind of looks like pinchers, but it's not. It's just made specially to be able to grab the female right there. And it, it's a really good fit. In fact, uh, it's like a lock and key that each species is just perfectly set to be able to, the end of the male, to be able to grab the female. And it's so perfect that, you know, one dragonfly species probably couldn't even hold another dragonfly species because it's so specialized. Once the male holds the female, then the female will use her abdomen and reach up to a secondary genitalia and take the sperm from the male. And then once the, the uh, female has that and the eggs get fertilized, then the male on some species continues to hold on and fly around with the female and uh, assist the female in being able to land and deposit her eggs in the water. When you see them in this position, you can hear it talked about um, as being in the heart or the will position. And the one picture furthest to the left, that's two damselflies that I mentioned earlier. I just put it in there because it made a really nice heart. So a good example of the heart position. Once the dragonfly is fertilized and lays eggs in the water, <clears throat> those eggs hatch and then uh, into the larval stage, as you see this nymph, and then uh, the larvae also are very predatory. They will live in the water for even up to five years. And while they're in the water, they're very predatory. You know, they mostly eat sediment-dwelling worms and things like that, but, but they'll grab a, a small fish or a tadpole if they can get a hold of it. When it's time for them to... Uh, to emerge from the water, then you see this, you can kind of already see that the wings are starting to form, you know, in the, in the nymph stage, but uh, when it's time, they'll just find a piece of vegetation, a, ta um, a tule or something, and just crawl out of the water, and then they split right down this line, and then uh, then the mature dragonfly just crawls out and, and dries off, and then uh, flies off and gets busy with its life. So this is the first um, dragonfly that I wanted to try to, for us to learn how to identify. And this is probably the easiest one. Uh, it's called the Black Saddlebags. It's a large dragonfly, so about three inches by three inches. But this one's pretty easy because on the, the, the hind wings, it's just got these two big old black blobs. And it's hard to miss whether it's landed or flying. Uh, if you see anything up there that just has those two big old black blobs on it, then that's a black saddlebags, one of our large dragonflies. So this is the green darner. This is our largest dragonfly, so this one is definitely pushing the limits of that three inches by three inches. The male is green and blue. The female is green and brown. And um, this is important, and I'll mention it on the next slide. Uh, but just remember that if you see green and blue or green and brown together, um, and it's large, this is the green darner. And I see these guys a lot uh, depositing their eggs. Um, I went through my hundreds of photographs of dragonflies, and I only found this one species and one more that uh, I had photos of them depositing the eggs on the water. Now, undoubtedly, they all do it. But for some reason, this one, this, this species does it 
uh, and you know maybe more in the daytime or in areas where it's uh, more visited by us but I see this a lot this is the blue-eyed darner again this is we're still talking about large dragonflies about three inches by three inches uh, for the blue-eyed darner the male is blue and black and the female is green and brown uh, on either one of them are there blue and green together so I mentioned on the previous slide that the green darner the one of them does have blue and green on the same the same individual but here there's no blue and green it's blue and black or green and brown on the female so uh, if you look out there and you see blue and green you'll know it's the other one so just keep that in mind uh, when you're when you're trying to identify the blue eyed darner so the male is blue and black the female is green and brown but no blue and green here's another one that I see a lot and it's also another one that's pretty easy to identify it's called the flame skimmer so if you look out and see a dragonfly and you think to yourself well look a red dragonfly it's probably this one even though it's really orange but when you first see it it comes across as red there is one that is very similar uh, called the neon skimmer which is red but um, I've never actually even seen that one I know they're around so um, if you maybe you're in an area where maybe there's both of them then it take a little practice to see if uh, if it's either actually orange or red but a little a little bit of uh, experience and you'll be able to do that and this is one that I'll mention this a few times they use familiar perches meaning that you know when they find a spot that they like to sit they want that spot so if you're trying to get a closer look or you're trying to get a photo and uh, you get a little bit too close and it flies away if you just be still and give it a little bit it will more than likely come back to that same spot and then uh, you can try another photo and then you might go a little bit closer and then if it flies off um, just wait it out a little bit and it, it will probably come back to that spot and I've done this many times and um, I've managed to get slowly uh, get close enough to get photos with my cell phone from you know just a foot or two away even closer on occasion so so I'll point it out on some of them and and uh, just remember that that you can end up getting some really nice photos if you just uh, have a little bit of patience so this one's the flame skimmer here's another skimmer this is one that I think this is our prettiest dragonfly called the 12 spotted skimmer we're still talking about uh, large dragonflies so this one the male is black and blue with that kind of uh, you know light light chalky blue color and the female is pretty much the same uh, just missing the blue and this is another one that will sit on a perch and uh, uh, give you a, a few chances maybe to get a photo um, even in if you if you only see females and so a lot of times the males are easier to identify because they have more color and so on but even if you're seeing females if you wait a little bit and look around you're probably gonna see a male also and, and uh, so you could wait that out and maybe that would help you with your identification but this one is the 12 spotted skimmer so here's a, another skimmer and again we're still talking about large dragonflies three inches by three inches uh, the, the widow skimmer this one's also very pretty the male is blue and black that same kind of powdery blue color and then the female is pretty much the same just missing the blue color and uh, this is another one that uses those familiar perches so another one that you could potentially get some really nice photos all right so now this is the first one in the medium uh, size category so you know more like two and a half inches by two and a half inches and this one's the common white tail the male has that white or bluish tail uh, the female doesn't and uh, this one the female is similar to the male uh, with without the blue the other ones were almost identical but you can see this one's missing the blue on the female but also the wing spots are a little bit different but really what you identify this one from is that short thick body you know the body after looking at the other dragonflies it looks a little bit too short for the for the size of the wings the wingspan and uh, it's real thick and it 
uh, it's actually pretty easy to identify just by that short thick body all right so here's another another medium dragonfly this one's called a spot wing glider and um, you can see on the picture on the right that first dragonfly we talked about the black saddle ba bags had those big old globs of black well this one has a much smaller uh, glob on the back and it's a little more brown but you can usually still see it uh, but really the way to identify these guys is you see that picture on the left is sometimes you will see them in swarms of you know hundreds and I don't see any other dragonfly in those big swarms I took that picture about a month ago and there um, there were literally hundreds of them and they're typically higher above the ground usually, usually you see these guys you know up about treetop level so if you look up in the sky and you see that many dragonflies it is more than likely a spot wing glider maybe you'll get see one closer to the ground and you'll be able to verify it by the spots but but just seeing a, a big group of them like that up at about treetop level they're probably the spot wing glider so all right so now uh, we're getting into the small dragonfly so closer to about two inches wide and two inches long this one's called the blue dasher uh, you can tell identify them by their uh, really pretty blue green eyes and a white face and this is one that we usually let you get pretty close and close enough that you know just with your eyes you know, you're um, you'll be able to see that white face and those blue eyes the position over here on the the right when it's really hot you know 100 degrees 100 degrees or so they'll land and they will they will put their abdomen in this position it allows them to uh, cool off a little bit um, and I see <laughs> it's been uh, very hot around Sacramento the past month and I've seen them doing that a lot so I mentioned earlier about if you look out and you see a dragonfly that appears to be red then it's probably the flame skimmer but this one also can be one <clears throat> that you look out and you think wow look at that red dragonfly but then that one is was a large dragonfly and this is where you know, it, the whole being able to tell the size comes into play but this one is a small dragonfly and uh, the mature males are you know mostly that reddish color and then uh, the one in the middle um, the females and immatures are more of a yellowish brown color and this is one that I see often very far from water I mean I have seen them in in just dry fields and when I can't even imagine where would be the closest water I was driving down a road one time with the barbed wire fence on one side and and um, you know I counted several hundred of them perched on the barbed wire in uh, in just a half a mile that I drove so if you're out somewhere and it's a dry and uh, you see a small dragonfly the first thing to think about would probably be the the variegated metal hawk and especially if you look at it and, and it kind of looks like you see some red okay well so that's the 10 and um, I wanted to point out a few resources to help you uh, if you go out looking for dragonflies a friend of mine dr. Tim Manolis who lives here in Sacramento he uh, produced a, a great book he's a he's a pretty incredible um, naturalist and birder and um, I heard that a number of years ago he was out and um, he looked up at tree level and saw what I'm sure was uh, spot wing gliders and there were hundreds of dragonflies and and uh, he decided you know what I don't even know what those are so uh, I'm gonna learn them and in the process of learning them he's also an incredible artist and uh, he put he put together this book and he painted all of the plates in the book and it's really incredible it's called dragonflies and damselflies of California you can you can find it on Amazon uh, we've got a, probably 10 copies that float around our office uh, the next one is a, a smaller pocket size book called common dragonflies of California by Kathy Biggs you can also find that one on Amazon and it's one you can just poke in your back pocket and then if you want to go to the internet this uh, this big long um, web address right here which is uh, www.migratorydragonflypartnership.org and uh, there's a ton of information there and, uh, and pretty much information on every one of these species and 
uh, range maps and all kinds of stuff and um, it can really help you and then also the this poster uh, this eight and a half by eleven poster that I created from the photos I've taken um, you can go and access this and download it and print it and it would be a great thing to take out if you're going out for the first time to really look for dragonflies you can get that at our website I mentioned earlier bufferlands.com just uh, go to the calendar of events section and find this uh, dragonfly presentation and uh, open that and then you'll see where you can download this little poster and um, I've had a number of people that have printed it and went out and then uh, came back and let me know that hey you know this was great we found you know all ten of these in one day or half of them and so I recommend giving that a try um, but there's all kinds of other resources internet resources but I hope this has been helpful and and um, you know I've had people that have taken this and then uh, came back and told me hey Raj I had no idea that you know there were so many dragonflies around I don't know if I've ever even noticed one and now every time I go anywhere I see dragonflies and we try to identify them so I hope you will use it and go out and have fun and, and um, take your kids with you outside and teach them how to, to appreciate dragonflies and and uh, you learn the 10 and then pretty soon it's like well you yeah, I'm gonna learn 10 more and then you learn 10 more and then you'll know more than I do so so go out and have fun and um, if you do access our website and go to that calendar of events we have uh, other uh, virtual presentations coming up so uh, just keep an eye on that and uh, thank you all